Indeed, the eagle has landed. And as you can see right behind me, the Nimasa Deep Blue Special Mission Aircraft, designed to surveil and provide adequate intelligence for the management of our maritime space, especially in Nigeria as well as the Gulf of Guinea. Hello and welcome to Nimasa This Week, the voice of maritime. Nimasa This Week is brought to you by the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, the nation's authority when it comes to regulating and promoting activities in our maritime space. My name is Ubong Esien as usual, and I will be your guide on this voyage. My name is Dr. Bashir Jamo, the Director General, Nigeria Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, on board SMB DB Abuja. You are watching Nimasa this week, the boys of maritime. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's still Nimasa this week, the voice of maritime. And we are coming to you from the NAF base here in Lagos. And it's a season where we are celebrating the Deep Blue Project. It's taken quite a while, but we have now arrived at the point of the launch of this project that will enable NIMASA to play its role of providing coverage for our maritime domain. What has the DG of NIMASA, Dr. Bashir Jamo, been up to this week? It's all about Project Deep Blue. The DG took out time to inspect some of the assets tied to this project which culminated in the arrival and reception of the special mission aircraft that will play a very important role when it comes to surveillance and providing real-time actionable intelligence for the protection of our waters. Also on the program, we'll bring you a special about the Deep Blue Project. How did we get here? Some kind of historical analysis of the various interventions to solve the problem of piracy in Nigeria. You get to find out some of the actions carried out in the past that have today led to the birth of the Deep Blue Project. Of course, our regulars, as you've come to know them. So, if you're ready, let's anchor away. In a series of events that later culminated in the receipt of the Nemasa Special Mission Aircraft, the DG of Nemasa in the company of the Executive Director of Finance and Administration, Honorable Chodi Ofodeli, the project contractors, HLSI Systems and Technology, the Deep Blue Project Coordinator, Mr. Anthony Ogadi, and other senior members of the agency, began the day taking the fast interceptor boat for a test drive. At the Naval Air Base Ojo, Dr. Jamo took time to inspect the three special mission helicopters in readiness for the official launch and also gave a pep talk to pilots and engineers of the Nigerian Navy who constitute the human force of the Deep Blue Project. Now the trainees, as you are aware, there is no important things in everything we do in human life other than human elements. We have spent huge amount of money to acquire these assets. This asset cannot work on its own and cannot operate on its own without people like you. So the greatest task now 
is to see how we can train and retrain each and every one of you so that you can man this asset properly and adequately. Not only manning the assets, but also the sustainability of this project. The sustainability of this project highly depends on each and every one of you. Boarding one of the special mission helicopters, the team took off from the Naval Air Force Base in Ojo and headed to the Nigerian Air Force Base, Murutala Mohamed International Airport, Ikeja, to witness the arrival of the special mission aircraft. As the aircraft landed, it was welcomed with a cannon water salute and taxied to a stop. Then the master boss, Dr. Bashuri Jamo, in company of the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Chief Timmy Prey Silva, and the master's executive director, Finance and Administration, Honorable Chodi Ofodili, were all on ground to receive the aircraft and went on board after briefly welcoming the pilots. <laughs> I was just telling the DG that this is actually something that uh, uh, Nigeria as a country need and require very urgently and it is coming at no better time. Um, just recently I was in Equatorial Guinea 
and we signed an MOU on uh, the security of the Gulf of Guinea. And this equipment, I believe, will be very handy in resolving some of those problems. Nigeria have had a lot of issues with piracy uh, and, you know, offshore uh, uh, facility vandalization, uh, pipeline vandalization. We've had a lot of issues and I believe that today we now have the solution to all those problems. Today is my happiest moment, it's my happiest day. By providence, I have the Honorable Minister of uh, uh, petroleum here with me. Uh, you know, all the service chiefs, they are with us, they have been working day and night, but uh, we have never been seeing the presence of uh, NNPC much in this. So, but uh, this shows that we are all together because we are fighting for the same goal, uh, you know, for the Nigeria, for public good. Addressing journalists during a brief ceremony to mark the arrival of the aircraft, Jamo said the assets will further improve security in Nigerian waters. We have already signed a kind of framework with the International Coordinating Center in Yaoundé on the implementation of Yaoundé architecture. And this uh, uh, framework, we've just published it less than 10 days ago, it's all in the Nigerian papers, including the international community. The Secretary General of IMO commended us on that particular action. So uh, this uh, framework is going to take nine countries of West and Central Africa. You will see me now just now with the Minister of Petroleum. So our discussion centered also on this. The issue of these platforms is not only restricted on piracy, arm robbery as you mentioned, pipeline vandalization, oil theft, illegal refinery, illegal smuggling of arms, illegal narcotics drugs, illegal human trafficking, illegal shipping, fishing, all this and more you will see. Pollution, prevention and control, all this asset are meant for that. The Special Mission Aircraft is the final phase of the delivery and installation of assets under the Namasa Deep Blue project designed to secure Nigerian waters up to the Gulf of Guinea. The DG of Namasa has called on maritime journalists in particular and journalists in general to show responsibility in the way and manner they carry out their reportage. The DG gave this charge while addressing groups of maritime journalist representatives at the agency headquarters. Dr. Jamo noted that what the media publishes today whether negative or positive, has a ripple effect and goes a long way in showcasing the country and hence admonish journalists to dwell more on the positives. What you publish now is going to the whole world. If you publish something negative, it will train your child, it will train your grandchild. It will train your grandchild. Because before you know, the woman doesn't have any capacity to come and see me or see us work and talk to you and confirm what he said. As soon as he punch Google, he see it, he believe it. So whatever you say, think over it. It's not for you. It will trap. What goes around must come around. And you are doing it to the nation. So if you think you are damaging an individual, you don't know the excess that they are going. The DG also stressed the need for the training of journalists stating the plan by agency to set up a media academy for the training and retraining of professionals that reports the maritime industry. Present at the meeting were representatives from Maritime Reporters Association of Nigeria, Maritime Journalists Association of Nigeria, League of Maritime Editors, Shipping Correspondents Association of Nigeria, Association of Maritime Journalists of Nigeria. The DG of Nemasa, Dr. Bashuri Jamo, played host to the Managing Director, NLNG Shipping Management Limited, Abdul Kadri Ahmed, at the agency office in Abuja. Ahmed said that NSML and Nemasa have a long-standing relationship that needs to be strengthened and forged closer. He talked about using the Nemasa floating dock to dry dock their vessels. On the flag of NLNG vessels, Ahmed said that it is not going to be achieved by fiat, but by working at it. The flagging of vessel, the Nigerian flag issue, is a common responsibility. It's not just Nimasa, it's a common, it's something that we all have to work towards and 
and sure it happens. And it's not just going to happen by fiat, it's going to happen because we've done the right things mm -hmm. and ensured that internationally the Nigerian flag is accepted as the right kind of flag such that we are then able to ensure. The MD of NSML also expresses willingness to support the Lemasa Action Plan on marine litters as part of their corporate social responsibility. Responding, the DG of Lemasa thanked the MD of NSML and advised relevant organizations to visit each other and see things from others' perspectives. The effort of Nimasa in terms of uh, uh, enhancing our own, uh, uh, you know, mandate will never be complete if we are not visiting each other so to know, to lay our complaint, to see things by ourselves, to see the efforts made by individuals in time to complement our own uh, activities. It, it, may, it will not be appreciated. When you visit and you see if you appreciate, you find it uh, much easier for you in terms of enforcement of certain, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mandates. Namasa's deep blue, calmer coast and safer seas, security is priority. Coming soon, 21st May 2021, powered by Namasa. Maritime security has been a challenging issue, not only in Nigeria, but all over the world. Over the years, Nigeria has undertaken several interventions to exploit her huge maritime resources with the increasing cases of maritime crimes, crude oil theft, and illegal bunkering in the Niger Delta and Gulf of Guinea. Sometime in 1994, during the Liberian War, the Nigerian government played a vital role in terms of peacekeeping force to help maintain peace in Liberia. Most of the platforms used to address the issue of maritime insecurity in Nigeria were sent to Liberia to assist in fighting the war. By the time the war was over, the platforms were depleted as a result of excessive usage without maintenance. When the Obasanjo administration came in 1999, he established what is known as the Presidential Committee on Maritime Security and Safety. PICOMS is to provide the platforms and the necessary impetus to fight insecurity on our waterways. However, there were a lot of problems in terms of misappropriation and others that led to the cancellation of the policy. The assets procured were shared among the agencies involved and the PICOMS chapter was closed. When the Jonathan administration came in, he introduced Global West which came as a public-private partnership agreement between the Global West and NEMASA. Under this agreement, 25 platforms were provided. This was also shrouded in a lot of fraudulent activities that drew the attention of the EFCC in 2015. Due to the sudden halt of the Global West, there was an increase in the crime rate in our territorial waters up to the Gulf of Guinea. In 2015, when the Honorable Minister of Transportation, Right Honorable Rotimi Amechi, assumed office, he introduced the Integrated National Security and Waterways Protection Infrastructure, otherwise known as the Deep Blue Project. The Deep Blue Project is to provide platforms to comprehensively address insecurity in Nigeria's territorial waters and exclusive economic zone. The project consists of three special mission helicopters, two special mission aircraft, four unmanned air vehicles, 
two special mission vessels, 17 interceptor boats, 16 armored vehicles, and human resources to man and operate these assets. It also includes the development of the command, control, computer, communication, and information center, C4I. The C4I center is to collect data and send to the security players to assist in fighting criminality. As of today, all of the platforms are on ground. Over 600 human forces are being trained and some of the assets are already deployed in operation. The entire project will come into full operation in a matter of days. Namasa's deep blue, calmer coast, and safer seas. Security is priority. Coming soon, 21st May 2021. Powered by Namasa. Welcome back. It's still Nimasa this week, the voice of maritime. And as you can see, the essence of the Deep Blue project is to protect, control, and manage Nigerian waters. And of course, provide a buffer for the Gulf of Guinea when it comes to maritime security. At this point, we'd like to read to you tweets from the DG to show the level of engagement the Deep Blue project has garnered on the various social media platforms. Of course, the DG uses mostly his Twitter handle at Jamu Bashir. So the first tweet from the DG's Twitter handle is hashtag Deep Blue. The DG is celebrating the arrival of the special mission aircraft. And he says, the Eagle has landed, announcing the arrival of the special mission aircraft. She is the mother of all assets, the crown jewel designed to go the distance in surveillance from coast to coast to help secure our exclusive economic zone as our eye in the sky. Another tweet from the DG, hashtag Deep Blue. I was honored by sheer providence to have His Excellency Chief Timmy Prey Silva, Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, join us to welcome our special mission aircraft, hashtag SME. At the NAV base, apparently, he was on his way to catch an Abuja flight. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nigerian Air Force. So you can continue this conversation with the DG of Nimasa at his Twitter handle, at Jamu Bashir. There's a lot of engagement going on out there in the social media sphere. Likewise, Nimasa Official, now that's our official handle, whether you're using YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, you can follow up also on those platforms. Now, if you're doing business with Nimasa, one of the best places to go to first and foremost is our official website, where most of the information you would require, whether you're setting up a maritime training institute or building a jetty, or you just want to play in the Nigerian maritime domain, in the area of safety and search and rescue, there's a lot you can be a part of. All that information you will find on 
our official website. I hope you've enjoyed today's special episode of Nimasa This Week, The Voice of Maritime, and that you continue to join Nimasa on this critical national assignment to protect our waters and to guarantee our economic viability by virtue of being a nation with a window to the Atlantic. So I leave you with this salty saying that water can do without fishes, but I'm not sure the fishes can do without water. The master will continue to protect our waters. So till I see you next time, my name remains Ubang Yesen, and I'm asking you yet again to stay on course. Bye-bye.